Uh, yeah, uh, Miguel Almiron. Um, uh, according to his agent, uh, who was talking to a Paraguayan radio station, <laughs> Foot Goal 970, uh, if you're ever in the uh, Asuncion area, uh, give it a listen. Uh, he said, uh, were it not for the global pandemic, he'd uh, no longer be playing for Newcastle United, apparently. Um, frustrated at his playing time, the style of football under uh, Steve Bruce. Um, it, well, if it wasn't for the pandemic, he would have been elsewhere, Campos explained. Perhaps, Why is that then? Well, perhaps well, he would like to play on a team that has lots of possession, maybe in June, maybe he'll make that jump. Why don't don't, um, don't transfers happen during a, pand- during a pandemic? I mean, why is that? Why is what? Well, there were other transfers happened during the pandemic, so oh, well, what is the difference? That's a good question. But anyway, maybe he just but wanted it, to stay it, where he it, was. It, it is amazing, isn't it, where it comes down to international uh, week, but <laughs> all their agents and players come out and come out with all sorts of rubbish. I think Pogba's been at it again, hasn't he, and his, his agent and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It just happens with every single player where they go over, start speaking to their local journalists and they just release... Nice little things that just upset everyone before they get back to their clubs before the weekend's football. So, frustrated, I would say that is for Steve Bruce. I think um, he's got himself together a decent squad, actually, and Almiron has been a big part of it for Newcastle this year. Yeah, it's not been great football to watch, I don't think, but it's, it's getting they're getting some results, though, aren't they? I mean, well, they are, do we expect them to finish in the top ten? They're above Manchester United. They're above Leeds United, Who and we've... Talk very brightly about Leeds as well because of the style of football they play. Yeah, so we're all really going to talk about to, Leeds, yeah, and we all like Bielsa, and he's the flavour of the month, isn't mm-hmm. he? We um, love Bielsa and what oh the football he's playing. But Steve Bruce, because it's not that type of football, gets a lot of criticism. I, I look, I'd love to hear from Newcastle fans um, uh, who aren't never shy coming forward about how they feel about this. So eight seven one seven double two double three double four. And if you don't say you want Benitez back because he's not. <laughs> Well, they're allowed to. You're allowed to want things. You're allowed to want things you can't have. We've all been in that situation before, haven't we, Goffey? I think it's interesting with um, with Newcastle, and I, I, I slightly changed my tune. I um, Steve Bruce is such a great bloke, right? And I, and I know that isn't the important. That's not what we're judging here. But it does it does sort of make you want someone to be successful. And uh, uh, if you are Newcastle United with the players that you have, well you're not going to have the ball against a, a lot of other teams because they have better players than you. That's kind of how it works. So you have to set up to try and get something. But I sort of... I watched that game against Spurs at, at White Hart Lane, right? You didn't but enjoy it? Honestly, right? That was the Eric Dyer handball last-minute penalty. And I sort of thought Newcastle should just... They should really just say, actually, we don't deserve anything from this game. Like, we've done nothing today. We're not going to score this penalty. We're just going to, you know, we'll let you have the point. It's not fair. It's not right for us to have anything from this game. And I watched another game. I forget which one it was. And it was tiresome. It was like, actually, if I did have to watch this every single week, I'd be a bit sad about it. But it's a really difficult balance. This is a really difficult balance for Steve Bruce. But I I, I, I can't see it, though. I mean... When you say there that the the other clubs have got better players, Almiron, you look at Longstaff, you mm-hmm. look at Richie, you look at Frazier, you look at uh, Shelby, you look at Wilson, you sure. look at St. Maximum. Yeah. They're all good players. They're all good players. Good but players. There are lots of good players in the Premier And who are co- quite comfortable on the ball, most of those players I've just mentioned. They're quick on the break as well. I think that's probably they've become an obsession with Newcastle at the minute. And Steve Bruce, the players he's brought in, he's probably thinking... I've got the players now that can catch the opposition out on the break. So perhaps it is harder to watch because mm-hmm. they're just waiting for that one opportunity to win a game 1-0. And it, it must be frustrating for football fans, especially Newcastle fans, when they look at their team and think, we've got good players here. Perhaps we should at least try and play better football. Guess but is he, using get... the, is he using the strength and the speed in which they could counter... It does help, doesn't it? it, it does help. If you have, plus. It, well, if you if you if you drop deep, then you have space in behind of the opposition because they the push oppos- up. Yes, let That's the opposition come on. And they're, then they're, when you've got someone like Saint Maximum, who can is as quick as anybody and skillful as anyone, mm-hmm. everybody knows what I think of him. I mean, I've bigged him up big time. I love watching okay, him play. Right, the fan club of Saint Maximum. The fun is when you get uh, a team like uh, Newcastle uh, who who don't want possession coming up against another team who don't want possession. Oh, yeah, that's when it and gets do they, do they just take kick-off and then all run away? Like, well, that's that's England-Scotland. Like, they get used to it. it. That's England-Scotland <laughs> next year.
<laughs> it's interesting. I mean, it's not. It's, it's not unlike what, what, what Steve Bruce is doing. I guess is saying these are the players I've got. This is the best way I get points. Newcastle it's, Wolves, isn't it? it? It's not unlike um, what Gareth Southgate is saying with England. This is the players I am. This is the formation I want to play. I want to play more on the counter, and I want to play. I don't know how much that sort of how little possession. England want to have to, to sorry to turn it back to England but I mean, there's a similarity there isn't it it's to look at a game and go am I likely to get more out of this if I can stop the opposition getting away rather than going to score mm. five goals and keeping the ball well like I said some teams have had success with it and you look at Wolves' record against better teams mm -hmm. and the results they got especially last year and the year before is because they invited the opposition onto them and attacked at speed with the forwards they had and they used their to surprise but they better, isn't it? yeah but they their first team but that's better. the way they played though against better opposition mm -hmm. the sat yep. back yep. and then countered with Jimenez Traore and Jota right yeah they were so good and then they got the quality in midfield of Martino and Neves and and Dendonka and all that stuff right that's what they thrived on but when they played against Opposition that were of as similar to them, they went for it. No, or oh, they didn't. They didn't. They okay. struggled then to break no, down the opposition. Good, a very they good found point, it. Isn't it? Yeah. They found it harder. And perhaps Newcastle have seen what Wolves have done and probably thought, you know, sorry, we could probably copy that. But they do it against absolutely everyone. Uh, That's Matthew, the way they play against everyone. Matthew's a Newcastle fan. Hey, Matthew. Uh, yeah, are you all right? Yeah, excellent. Thanks. How are you doing? Yes, not too bad, thank you. Um, will you. Are you looking forward to getting back into St James's Park to watch your current Newcastle team? Uh, not under Steve Bruce, no. <laughs> and it wasn't exactly... It wasn't exhilarating under Rafa either, don't get me wrong. But I think when you've got a, you know, a manager who's had success at you know, Champions League, UEFA Cups, La Liga, it's a bit more enticing than... Steve Bruce, who you know, let's be honest, he's not achieved anything in management, at least. But why is it? Well, why is it more enticing? What? Because he's called Rafa Benitez. I mean, when you used to well, go no, away he, from he, when he you used to go away place. from home, be honest. When you used to go away from home under Rafa, what was it like going away from home? What did he used to do? Should it, shot, it, didn't it he? was it was very backs up against the wall, which I do understand. It was painful, but I think you know it. Yeah, I guess yeah. The name the name Rafa it has something to it. Steve Bruce doesn't. Yeah. So okay. if I was Steve Bruce, he wants to change his name to Rafa Bruce. Rafa Bruce. Well, he uh, we won the playoffs. He's, like, he's, like, he's 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 look, but he's doing okay. I mean, that's the the difficulty. He's is, doing and, okay. And, and the but you know for balance. And I do think Matthew, you know, like I said, I, I, I've sort of changed my tune after watching that game at Spurs, and I just was like, wow, they've done that team has done not a thing. But you're doing okay. You know, you're above Leeds, and everyone's talking about how wonderful Leeds are, Matthew. I, I, I think I had enough of Bruce after the Southampton game the other day. Uh, and that was just, I think that was one of the worst performances I've ever seen. That, like, Southampton have been fantastic so far. But we, we didn't have a shot till, well, it was a header from Joel Linton. And, you know, we don't really need to get started on Joel Linton either. But, like, come on. It's, it's, I, will, I will agree with that, though. The different styles there. Southampton have played some wonderful football. Oh, yeah, lovely. They? Yeah. Um, they play some wonderful football this uh, this season, especially. In fact, they have la end of last season when he changed the formation, didn't he? After that nine nil uh, defeat, it was nine nil, wasn't it? I mean, he changed the formation, the way they they wanted to play. It was almost like a four four two. And ever since then, really, they've played some magnificent football. Southampton, yeah, fourth in the league. Mm. Oh, it's very tight, condensed. It's early in the season. They they really like people bringing up the nine nil. It was so funny, I and mean, it was funny. But, but it was a game changer for them. Horizontal. Do you know when rain. you look back at it now? I mean, I think they take that the Southampton fans because since that day, yeah, they have played some yeah, wonderful no, no, football, right. and I, he's changed it. I've said it before. The thing I really liked about that was sort of pundits in warm studios criticizing fans for leaving early. And of course, if we'd known what was going to come, you might have stayed till late. Criticizing fans when they would have left seven there, nil down. Surely? Honestly, I mean, the rain was horizontal. <laughs> like it was the worst. So you think, it's not going to get worse than this. Fair play to any Southampton fan who's day to the end of that uh, but yeah playing wonderful stuff at the moment well done Ralph uh, you're listening to Drive on Talk Sports with Tool Station tools and more for any task